What I love about Johan, he's kind of the quintessential European gentleman and businessman, you know, so honesty and integrity are very, very important to Johan and, um, you know, that's the way he lives his life and he's, um, you know, he's a one of a kind. He has this class and quiet passion about him. Gentleman, dedicated, uh, an American. I've never heard him use a, a profane word. I think personal accountability is a value that, um, coming from a, you know, coming from Norway, right after World War II, um, you don't, you just don't take everything for granted. And I think he's always instilled in us that, you know, we we need to make our own way. We need to pay for ourselves, and then we need to help others. Mm -hmm. My uh, most fondest memory, and probably my earliest memory of Johan was when I solicited him for a gift to the Cottage Theater. And I appeared in his office, and after I nervously made my presentation to him across his expansive desk, he very quietly stood up and uh, quietly walked uh, toward me and sat on the corner of his desk and proceeded to uh, respond with a, a gift that was larger than I had asked for. He's been like a mentor to me. When I was very young, I lost my father. He's really the male role model I've had, and very professional, um, and he's taught me a lot. I had received one day, I got a newspaper article, and a little sticky note that was on it from Johan, and it was from the Orange County Register, and it was about the Power Chicks, um, which was a um, women's leadership initiative that was started at the United Way in Orange County. And his little sticky note on there, all it said was, we need to do this, Johan. And that really was the catalyst that got our movement for our Women in Philanthropy initiative going. I don't think there is probably a better example of a corporate citizen in our community now than uh, Johan Malum. He's done very well from a business perspective, but, it, but the community has also done well because of that. He's a very strong leader. He, uh, one of the things that amazes me is uh, how he seems to be on top of everything. You know, and he can, uh, he can be gone for a few days, and when he comes back, uh, he's right there, and he's uh, like, like he'd never been gone. Whatever it takes to get something done, mm -hmm. you know. He just is a go-getter and work. You know, I've been fortunate to work at the bank for about four years now, so I get to see my dad every day, and uh, he gets there before I do most of the time. <laughs> he feels very strongly about education, and he's he's been very generous with our children, helping them with their college educations. And I think we're out of ten grandkids now. We have eight of them out of college, I think, and seven maybe, but you know, just that's, that's something that's very important to him. Stayed with Johan and ML at their uh, place in uh, uh, Istanbul for a week. And at that time I weighed 270 plus pounds. And I thought, you know, Johan is really a slender guy and he's active. And so I started watching what he ate and how he ate. And I thought, wow, when I get home, this is what I'm gonna do. In six months, I lost 35 pounds, and I've kept it off. So he's been a great influence in my life. His physical stamina is, uh, is amazing. No, he's still skiing. How old is he now? Eight, Eight, not, 81. 81. He probably doesn't want us to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, going to work every day. I've seen him change a lot over 36 years. He's relaxed, and he's <laughs> loving what he's doing, and he's having a good time, and we're all relaxed and having a good time right along with him. You know, we have 160 more employees at the bank, and he gives them five days a year pay to go out and help people like the United Way and a whole bunch of nonprofit organizations. He gives so much money to the Boy Scouts, uh, to the School of Music at U of O, and he's just very involved with everything. He just lives life and grabs it and gives as much back as he can. The culture of Sayusal Bank really is that we are a community bank, so we care. Our core value is giving back to the community, philanthropy, being involved, getting involved in every organization, every community that we're in. And Johan has taught all of us to volunteer, to give, whether it's our time, whether it's our money, whether it's compassion, whatever it is. The other thing he's taught to me, which is amazing, is that you don't need to toot your horn to do it. 
you give because you want to give and it's the right thing to do and to get involved. You don't have to have somebody give you this recognition. So for this, for him, will be a really big thing. No, I don't think he enjoys the spotlight, to be honest with you. He, he likes to kind of lay low, do his thing, um, you know, be charitable. He's not ever out looking for, you know, a pat on the back or anything. So that's just kind of the way he is. I mean, I think he'll be really shocked when he finds out about this award, for sure. My wife wanted to mention that uh, when she was uh, involved in raising funds for the arts and for LCC and other various charities, that Johan was always in the affirmative when she would ask him for something, and uh, that says something about his dedication to the community. Um, he has given through his generosity gifts that will impact and improve this community for generations to come. Johan, congratulations. You know, you deserve it. Um, you've always been a strong supporter for our community, and, and I know you'll always continue to be so, and, and now he's got a daughter that apples not falling far from the tree, you know, to kind of carry on his legacy. So I think it's wonderful. I'm very proud of the fact that he is so generous, and I really see the need. So it, it just really means a lot to me. One of the things I admire the most about Dad is his really strong ethic. He has an incredibly strong ethic. He's confidential. He has a lot of integrity. And um, I find myself many times saying, what would Dad do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was in Brownsville, and the Pioneer Days was the event that they have in Brownsville every summer. And, and, and the uh, JCs and other community leaders were trying to bring a clinic to Brownsville. There were no medical services in Brownsville at the time, back in the early 60s. And so in the parade, uh, my mother and, and my father came up with this idea that we would be able to make a political statement in the Kitty Parade. This was the Kitty Parade. And so, so my mom uh, basically... Um, made costumes for the four of us and we were basically all injured and had <laughs> broken arms and broken legs and eye patches and I pulled a wagon with Rolf in it I think because I don't think he was old enough to walk yet and we all had you know casts mm -hmm. and um, and there was a sign that said you know help bring medical services to Brownsville so I mean it, they even got the kids into these political into these political arenas. He is someone who has been enormously beneficial to me and he's been a great mentor, and uh, it's a privilege to, to honor him and to, uh, to be one of the ones that you've chosen to speak in his honor. And uh, though I can't be with him this evening, I, uh, I celebrate his, his, uh, his award and look forward to many more times together in the future. Tell him I love him. <laughs> we love, love you, Dad. Dad. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations.